Non mi ha detto che faccio un mezzo massimo di mano. Ansame, ma papà, ma. Ma, buti, e non mi ha detto che 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 mi ha And then I dam walk home of Usia, I mean, we know my power. Some of the other boat do more, and the other big chum yay. You be able for some cacra, nine years and a pine. The BI in a minute shall see it in a me every year. Those who've been here for a while waiting for us, as you can see, because of the rain, there are traffic everywhere. Apologies for beginning slightly late. What we have come to is a brief service. In all things, it's important to begin with God. And in all things, it is important to end with God. May we be consoled. Perhaps our, even, our sorrow is heightened because of the weather we face today. It may seem gloom, but let us not allow ourselves for it to be gloom for us. That we have the power to transcend whatever seems gloom and darkness. Life can be difficult. Life can be painful. Unexpected circumstances can come our way. But let us know that situations, circumstances that throw itself at us doesn't have the last word. That with the help of God, with the power of God, we shall always triumph. And as I encourage those of you who were at the vigil, at the wake, or the viewing last night, that for us Christians, death does not have the last say. That through the resurrection of Jesus, there is life after death in heaven. Jesus says in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me may not die, but if even they die, will have eternal life. In heaven there will be no more death, no more weeping, no more stresses of running late. I want you to be present at this moment, especially you, Mami, Mami, Ama, and Nana. This is your very last Baba to your dear father. Take your mind everything that is external of here and be attentive to what will happen in the next 25 or so minutes. So that in future you may think I was able to give a befitting bye bye to my father. Forget about all the circumstances of today, the lateness or everything. It does not matter. What matters is that you are here with your daddy to say bye bye. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith. That your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Samuel, Adam Wakon, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Anna, you've done well so far. If you are a strong woman, come up and give a tribute to your father.
Dear Daddy, Growing up, you were my hero. I always admired the way people respected you, whether it was friends, family, or even my school teachers. Whenever you spoke, people listened. Everyone who met you commented on your perfect English and impeccable stuff. Perhaps for them, it was unusual to meet an African man who was so sharp in words and in being. But you would show me that we descended from a lineage of intelligent, courageous justice seekers. In the late 1800s, your great-grandfather took an English army battalion to court for damaging his land. They had set up an impromptu camp and in the process of creating a clearing, they had burnt down his crops without consent. Your great-grandfather was furious and despite being illiterate, he won his case and was rightfully compensated because he had persevered for the truth. As a child, this story filled you with confidence, and this confidence built in you a world that was limitless. You seized every opportunity, and even when there seemed like there was none, you would create one. You moved through the world fearlessly, and dare anyone call you a pushover, because in spite of your small frame, you were an enormous force. As a family, we would often be seen walking through our housing estate, near King's Cross in flamboyant account attire. Our weekends were full of social gatherings in the Ghanaian community, and it was important that you attended. Whilst I love these events, the journey from our front door to the car would feel me with despair as our white neighbours stared at our African clothes. One day, sensing my anxiety, you pulled me close and told me to walk with my head held high. You loved Ghana and you loved Ashanti. You were deeply proud of our culture, and you made sure I felt this too. You always complimented my dark skin, telling me it was soft like your mother's and how its richness reflected the heritage of a powerful people. At the age of 13, you lost your father in a car accident and following his death, you became the man of the house. You took this responsibility very seriously and you cared for your siblings throughout their, throughout their lives, but you also looked after their children, grandchildren and many others. You believed in the power of community and you would help someone and if you could help someone, then you would. I don't know the exact number of people who have named their children after you as a thank you for the support you gave them, but your impact has been far reaching. Throughout your myriad of successes and challenges, you always made sure to enjoy life. When mummy first told me the story of you in your nightclub wearing flared trousers and platform shoes dancing to Kung Fu fighting, I laughed to the point of tears. Whilst I wasn't alive then, Knowing you, I could picture this vividly, and this, like the endless memories we share, will stay with me forever. Losing you has created a voice in me that can never be filled. You are imperfect, but I loved you immensely. My best and my worst traits come from you. I remember when my behaviour would frustrate you. I blatantly hear you say, Nibana, I can see I just like me. Many of my life choices, my passion for helping those less fortunate, my commitment to living healthily, my activism and my zest for life are because of you. I often hear your voice loudly in my mind as it reminds me of the values you instilled through me, in me through the many things we will discuss. I will miss our conversations and how you would say, oh, now, now, when I'd express a point you couldn't agree with. I will miss your laughter and your curiosity. You were always reading and willing to learn, and whilst you were born almost 100 years ago, in a time of no internet, TV or mobile phones, you were one of the most innovative minds I knew. I am so glad Aaron got to meet you, and you told him you loved him. Sometimes I laugh to myself at how similar you both are, but this also fills me with wonder. He is hardworking, thoughtful and loving, just as you were. I will always cherish that morning that you and I prayed together, <coughs> I will never know what you ask God, but that same week I got a new job and I met the love of my life, for which I am eternally grateful. As I embark on this journey to start my own family, rest assured that your grandchildren will be well disciplined and that they will know of their great ancestry. Daddy, I love you. It was a blessing to know you, and through our relationship I learned to accept people's imperfections as well as my own. We are all flawed and yet everyone deserves forgiveness. You thrive in this world because of your faith in God, and I trust you will continue to protect us now you are gone. I have no doubt that wherever you are, you are enjoying the afterlife. 
I have dreams of you laughing with your mom, dad, Uncle Skido, Uncle K, Jesse, Uncle Mensa, Nana America, Uncle Yabi, and your many loved ones who left this earth before you. You did good, Dad. Now it's time for you to rest. We will continue to make you proud, and one day we will dance together again. Love always, Nana Kusi. I met you in 1973, when I was a young girl coming into the limelight. And I remember this day like it was yesterday. We were in my uncle Kweku Bwachi, popularly known as Skiddo's Boutique, Village Gate in Ashdown, when you saw me and asked who, whose daughter I was. My uncle explained that my mother was his sister, Mami Chama and my father was Kwame Dabha. You asked for him to introduce you and we exchanged a brief conversation before I left. I was a student at Mansell's Girls Vocational Institute and the following week, I was called to the office to collect a parcel. To my surprise, you had bought me food provisions and money along with a small note signed, Ms. Dabha. This was the beginning of our 50 year journey together. Through those years, we had a lot of fun. We would make regular trips driving to Kumasi to Accra, driving from Kumasi to Accra and enjoying ourselves. I remember we would often spend the night in in between. We laughed a lot and I was fascinated by you. After a break of work, we returned to ask my family for my hand in marriage. We had our traditional ceremony, and then on the 11th of June, 1985, my aunt Dora Asamwa, aka Ekia Tuluswa, brought me to England to join you. In April 1994, we had a British wedding to mark our union as husband and wife. Our relationship wasn't perfect, but we loved each other. Each time we had conflict, you would always come back and tell me that you loved me. People around us also witnessed this love. Whenever we would go out and dance, you would pull me close within the first few minutes and tenderly hold me, hold your arms across my legs. I would call you daddy and you would call me mommy. Together we raised four beautiful daughters together and my heart will forever be full of endless memories we shared. Whilst you were older than me, I never imagined you leaving us. I was very young when we met and I spent the majority of my life with you. The day before your death, we ate at Nigel's together and we were looking forward to Christmas. I 
Look how much his children are grieving. And then the person continued. If you look after your children with all your heart, selflessly, if you give all to your children, that is how they will mourn you. I'm sure you can never with these words. And the person who said that spoke the truth. The love of a father is immense. The love of a fa- the love of a father is crucial. A father's love makes and unmake children. Sometimes people think only the sons that's an absence or a non-loving father have an effect on, but maybe even more on daughters. And it's sad that we have crisis of fatherhood at least in our country. That so many fathers are absent in the lives of their children. Their children are growing up without them. Your father impacted you and all their children, giving himself selflessly for them. But think about it this way. If the love of the father can make such impacts, how much more the love of God? If we who who are human beings and are flawed in, in various ways, can love our children and make such tremendous impact on their lives. How much God, who is perfect and perfect love, First John chapter four verse sixteen says, "God is love. God is love itself." And in fact, God uses the analogy of father, mother, love for the children for Himself. If we read Luke chapter eleven verse eleven and Matthew chapter nine verse seven, Jesus says, "What father will give their child bread?" will give them a stone if they ask for bread. Or what father will give their child snake if they ask for fish? Or what father will give their child scorpion if they ask for an egg? And then he continues that even you, human, simple as you, you are, know how much to give good things to your children, how much more your father in heaven. And again, we'll hear in the Old Testament in Isaiah, Isaiah says, Will the mother forget the baby at the breast? If even these will forget, God your Father in heaven won't forget you. As we celebrate a father and children relationship and the beauty of it, let us also transcend our mind. Let us also that carry us to our Father in heaven, our eternal Father in heaven. Remembering that human love models the love of God. And so think about the love of God and how deeply God loves us so we can also love God back. Amen. Samri, we have a memorial of our dear father with some photos.
Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our dear one. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things will destroy even death itself. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our dear one, Samuel Adeyamuakum, in a sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with, us, with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and with you and with our dear one, someone down our home forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we remain standing, please?
What direction are we going? I'm following the uh, so I'm just a go bear. I don't actually know where it is. Um, Where's the director? Where's Jim? The conductor. Okay. okay. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay. I need to know so I can position myself. And they've been calling her as well. Yeah, that's what they're doing now. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be making our way to Grace. So, I check if you return to your cars for me, okay? Yeah. Run with our show, baby. This way? Yeah, down there. You might have to drive a bit. Yeah. How are you?
I will now bless the grave and the coffin will be lowered. Please, come on, guys. Please, be quick, please. Come, you whom my father has blessed, says the Lord. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation in the world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. So may the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection. 
even as he as he claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our brother may sleep here in peace until you are waking him to glory. For you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face. And in your light we will see light. And know the splendor of God who lives forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless this grave, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You can come closer. closer. Because God has chosen to call our dear brother Samuel Adamuako from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he's risen, the firstborn of all who have fallen asleep. Let us commend our dear one to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise, him, and raise his body on the last day. At the end of each of these prayers, we shall all respond, Lord, have mercy. Together, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Adam Wakon and dry the tea and tr and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. You raise the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. You promised paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Samuel Adam Waku to the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our dear one Samuel Adam Waku. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. Let us join our voices with one heart and say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven,
and let us pray. Almighty God, through the death of your son on the cross, you destroyed our death. Through his rest in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. And through his rising again, you restored us to eternal life. God of the living and the dead, accept our prayers for those who have died and are buried with them and are buried in hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joys of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We've almost come to the end of the graveside rite. In a moment, I'll give a final blessing. On behalf of Abraham Pong and her children and another Moakos family, I would like to thank all of you for coming to mourn with us. Yami Adeshye, the Bia Daya Kosun Yani Putin, and when you force it, or bra it a war, and we watch it so back home from. Your pay, your new year, young queen, or the ball bra, or ma or nananum, or you are watching it. The bra baby, yeah. Dan Hunya Mia say, You swear at the Amani Cross in your mamma. And now, you didn't have a barber shed as I see so. If you had a tear and a tear when you have a cough, send you a joke, a catcher with your pink room. And the Munya say, Someone did do other bold doom. In so to grow, no man parba. No ma ba. You chin up now for the ma. Any adult fool, a busia. Okay. Uh, oh, I you should buy anyone with flowers. Flowers. <laughs> You can put it in or you can put it on the side when we fill the grave we'll put it on top.
Tu dois casser question. Oh uh-huh. 